What's going on YouTube? It's Adam from Beyond the Grid. Welcome back to my channel for another Lightroom tutorial. I'm especially excited for this one because a lot of you guys have been requesting a video regarding the HSL panel and how it's going to affect your photo. So that's what today's tutorial is going to be all about. So let's roll that intro and let's get into this tutorial. But if you close your eyes... Okay, so before I can jump right into Lightroom and start showing you guys what the HSL panel is, I think you need a little bit of an understanding of what HSL is and how it's gonna affect your photo before we start to use it on an actual photo. So to begin with, I'm gonna show you guys a color wheel. And to simply put, a color wheel is something that represents a multitude of colors around a circle and illustrates the relationship between those colors. So let's jump into Lightroom really quickly and let's show you guys where the HSL panel is and let's show you how it's gonna affect the color wheel so you can really get an understanding of how it's gonna affect your photo. Okay, so now that we're in Lightroom, let's locate your, your HSL panel and that's gonna be on the right hand side. It's gonna be the third one from the top of your development modules. You're gonna see HSL, color, and BMW, which stands for black and white. So let's go ahead and open up your HSL and you're gonna notice that everything's categorized into three sections, your hues, your saturations and your luminances. So all your sliders that are located in this section are gonna be your luminancy sliders. All your sliders in this section are gonna be your saturation sliders and all your hues are gonna be located right here. Now, if you click on the color, you're gonna see a little bit different. It's gonna be categorized by color. So your hues, your saturation, your luminancy, red sliders are all gonna be underneath the red. And same as like your blue, your hues, your saturation, your luminancy sliders for the blue are gonna be located underneath the blue. Now, if you click on the black and white, what it's going to do is it's going to change the entire photo to black and white based on the colors. So let's click on that and you're going to see that everything's black and white. So if you begin to slide one of these around, like let's say I take my green, which as you guys can see, the green are all located right here. And I start to begin to slide that. You guys will notice that the green become black as I go to the left, which is your blacks. And I go to the right, it's going to be all the way to the white. Now let's reset that by double clicking on the actual lettering and let's go back to the color. This is where I edit most of my photos because I like to categorize everything by the color and work my way down the list rather than going by all your saturations, all your luminances and all your hues. So if you come over here, you're gonna see your hues, your saturation and luminances. So let's go over what hues and saturation and luminancy are. So hue, we think of more of the shade of color. So with the red, there are multiple shades of red as you guys can see here. It goes all the way from maroon to pink. And it depends on how much of your RGB is included in there that's gonna be affecting your photo. So the more greens or blues, it's a difference between which side of the, uh, the hue it's gonna be on. So as I take this over to the left of the hue slider, you're gonna notice that everything's gonna become more saturated and more almost pink. And as I go towards the very right, you're gonna notice that everything's gonna become more orange. So let's reset that real quick. And let's go down to our blue and I'm going to explain a little bit difference on how you're going to get different shades of color. So if I bring my blue slider to the left, you're going to notice it's going to become more aqua. And I go to the very right, you're going to notice it becomes more purple. That's because the end slider of here is actually the beginning slider of your purple. So if I go to the very left, you're going to notice that the blues are going to become out of your purple. And same as if I go all the way to the left, you're gonna notice that the aquas are gonna become, or sorry, the blues are gonna become more aqua and the aquas are gonna become more blue. Now for saturation, we think more about the intensity of color rather than the actual color. So if I go back to my reds and I start to slide my slider over across, you're gonna notice that the intensity is gonna become less because as you go to the left of the slider, the intensity is telling it that we don't want that in the photo. And if I go to the opposite side to the red, a slider to the very right, you're gonna notice that the reds are gonna be more vibrant and more saturated. Now let's go to our luminancy slider. As we think of luminancy, we think of the brightness of color and there's an extreme between the two. So if I go to the left, you're gonna notice that the, the brightness is gonna become very dark. And if I go to the very right, you're gonna notice that the brightness is almost gonna to become towards white. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of what the HSL panel is and how it's gonna affect your photo based on the colors and how the colors interact with each other, let's show you why it's kind of important. So when you look at a photo like this, super bright, super yellow, but when you took the photo, that yellow was different. So you wanna change it and make it really pop off of that and really pull her away from it. What we can do is we can go over to your yellow slider and start to begin to change your hues. So if I go to my saturation, you'll notice that I can almost get rid of all of the yellow. Or if I go to the other side, you're gonna notice that I can make the yellow really intense. So let's leave it a little bit up 
and let's go to our hue. So if I go all the way to the left, you're gonna make it almost like a peachy orange. And if I go to the very right, you're gonna notice I'm gonna pull it into the green. That's because again, this side of the slider matches this side of the slider of your green. So let's leave it a little bit yellow. So a little bit right there. And now your luminosity. So if I go to the very left, you'll notice that I can almost make it dark and black, which looks really fake. And it's starting to affect your skin. So if I go to the very right, I can really brighten that yellow right up. But I don't want to do that. I just want to go a little bit there. And let's actually bring that saturation down a little bit. And let's bring up our hue. Actually, let's bring it down just a tiny bit. And that looks pretty good. So if I go to a before and to an after, you'll notice that that yellow is just a little bit less intense, but it almost draws your eyes to her rather than the photo. So let's go and change her up a little bit and let's give her a little bit darker of a tan. So if I go to my orange slider, I can actually pull this down a little bit and you can notice that I can get rid of almost all of her skin color. But let's go down just a tiny bit there and let's bring down our luminancy. And as you can see, I can give her a really almost chocolate kind of tan, which looks really fake. But if I just bring it down just a little bit and I bring my hue up just a tiny bit, you'll notice a small difference in her skin color. But you know what? Let's bring this up a little bit here. And that looks a little bit better. So that's again before. And that's your after. And you know what? I like it a little bit more saturated here. So let's slide that a little bit. Let's go that way a little bit. And let's bring down that luminancy. So again, just some minor details on this one, but you can see how you can start to play their sliders and really adjust the colors based on what it is. So let's show you guys a photo with a person that's gonna have different colors and how you can create different looks based off of that photo. Let's say you got a photo that you wanna make yourself tanned and it's a travel photo and you really wanna brighten things up. So something like this, let's say. Well, it's not gonna be that much of a work. So I've already done a little bit of work on your basic panel, as you guys can see here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna really adjust things in here. So let's make her tan. So let's go to my yellows and let's drop those down a little bit in my luminances. My saturation, I could drop that right down, but I don't wanna go down. And then my yellows, I wanna go down a little bit. Now my oranges, if I go right down, we can make her almost black, which we don't wanna do. And left on my luminancy, we can actually start to create a tanned effect. But if I go too much, she's gonna look really odd. So let's not go too much there. Saturation, let's bring that up a little bit. And my hue, we're gonna go up there. Now let's adjust our greens and make that forest in the back really pop. So let's go up here and let's go like that. And as you guys can see how that really affected that forest, it's quite a bit already. Now let's go into our aquas and our blues and let's adjust the water. So if I go right onto the saturation, you'll notice that I can adjust the water just a little bit in that sky a little bit. So I'm gonna go that way. Let's create a little bit of a hue on it with towards the aquas. And let's bring this up. And aquas, I'm gonna bring this up there. Our luminances, I'm gonna really raise this guy up and really make it pop there. And let's bring it towards the blue. So already you guys can see how much of an effect that really has, but it's kind of drained her out. So let's go back over to our slider here and let's really just raise this up a little bit. Let's bring our saturation down a tiny bit and our hue up a tiny bit there. Our luminancy here, let's bring that down a little bit there, up there, down there. And then our luminancy on our red, if we raise this up, you'll see that she'll actually brighten up. Let's go this way a little bit towards the orange and our saturation, we're gonna go down a little bit. So as you guys can see, that's already making her pop, but to really make her go, let's put a gradient filter on her again, just like the last photo. Let's open that up around her. Let's turn off invert so we work on the outside only. And let's bring that down a little bit. Let's bring down our highlights, raise our shadows a little bit so it's not too dark around her. And again, with the clarity, let's bring that down. So let's look at it before and an after. So let's get rid of that really quickly. Let's pull up another one. So you can either drag and drop or you can hover over it, hit control, hit duplicate, click invert so we're working on the inside. Let's reset all these by double clicking. And let's raise this up a little bit, really make her expose. And as you guys can see, the photo still got a lot of green in it. So if I go to the before and the after, there's an overall green sort of tinge to it. 
So you guys can get rid of that with your split toning. So if I come over here and I go to my highlights, I can actually make it either blue, which we can go that way, or I can really warm it up. But you know what? I like it over here. And then in the shadows, this is where I'm gonna create almost a little bit more of a tan effect. And let's go there. So if I turn on my turn off the uh, split tone, you guys can see that is my before, and that's my after. It's just subtle effects that are really gonna change the photo. Okay, so now that we're back in Lightroom, let's look at this photo here. So what I've done is I've done a couple small edits in your basic panel. These are just minor adjustments just to adjust the photo. So this is your before and this is your after. And I know you guys are gonna be like, wow, that looks horrible. She almost looks like, like an Oompa Loompa but we're gonna change it around a little bit. So once we go down to our HSL panel, you'll really start to see a couple of the differences. So let's slide this down and let's start to adjust these panels. So with our red slider, let's move this up towards the orange a little bit. Say about plus 19. Our saturation, let's bring this up as well. And our luminancy, let's bring this right down to let's say minus 32. Our oranges, let's leave our hue. Let's drop our saturation down. And our luminancy, let's drop this down as well. You can already start to notice a little bit of a difference in her, but we're not done yet. So let's go to our yellows. Again, hues, we're gonna leave that. Our saturation, we're gonna bring this up. And our luminancy, we're just gonna touch this just a tiny bit. And then our greens, we're gonna bring the, our hue up. Our saturation, we're gonna leave where it is. And our luminancy, we're gonna bring this down. So what that's going to do is that's going to affect our, our grass. So if you ever want to see what you're affecting, you can take your luminancy and just slide it really fast all left and right, and you'll see where it's going to be affecting it. So let's bring that back down to about a 29. Our aquas, we're going to bring this up just to about... Mm, right there looks pretty good. Our saturation, we're going to bring this... Actually, let's leave our saturation on. I'll play without too much. And then our luminancy, let's bring this down... Mm, Actually, let's go up and then our saturation. Let's actually go down with that. And then our blues, we're going to leave our hue. We're going to bring our saturation up. And our luminancy, we're going to bring up just a little bit. Actually, let's go down a little bit. That looks pretty good because what we're going to do is we're going to wash out our jeans a little bit, as you can see there. So let's go down just a little bit there. Our purples, I think there's a little bit of purple in here. So let's check that by sliding really quick. And you can see it right in her shirt. So our purple, our hue, we're not really gonna touch too much. What we'll do is we'll drop our saturation just cause I don't want any purple in that shirt. And same thing with our magenta, we'll drop that down. Cause again, there's a little tiny, tiny bit in there. So already you can see a little bit difference in here. There's a little tiny bit of a difference, but what I would do is I would come down here to our camera calibration and I would begin to adjust these. So as you can see, I can bring this one over a little bit. I can bring my aquas over a little bit and my greens I can bring up a little bit and just really rose her up. And let's go that way a little bit. And let's bring this up a little bit. Our saturation there and our shadows. Let's go, hmm, let's go this way a tiny bit. And now as you can see from movie four and an after, it's pretty good. Um, but what I would do is, because we really want to make her pop, I would take a radio filter, open it up, bring it around her, bring this in a little bit so it's a little bit tighter on her, click the invert because I want to affect the outside of the photo, and let's bring down our exposure, as well as let's drop our clarity and kind of make a blur effect on the outside. And then what you can do is you can hover over this, hit control, and duplicate, click your invert, and let's work on the inside and let's raise the inside just up a little bit. And if I turn these off, you'll notice a small difference from that to that. So that's your before and that's your after. So as you guys can see, it's not that hard to work with your HSL panel. It's a little bit daunting when you first get started and trust me, I was the same way. I didn't know what to do with this or how to do with it. And I honestly watched other people's YouTube videos and they didn't really show the correlation between the colors and how the colors affect each other. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys and you guys are gonna take something from it and really take control of your photos. And I love to see all your guys' photos. So again, continue to tag me on Instagram. I love seeing them. If you guys don't know what my Instagram is, it's Adam underscore beyond the grid. And again, it's right there. 
So if you guys have found this video helpful at all, make sure you guys hit that like button. If you guys are not a subscriber, I mean, why aren't you? Hit that subscribe button. And until the next video, take care, everybody.